One of those interesting effects that's actually quite hard to get your head around to use properly is the time effect echo. So if you go to your effects panel and you go to video effects, go down to the time category, you'll see that you've got a time echo. We've already looked at posterized time. Echo is another time effect which can be quite powerful and effective. So I'm going to apply echo to this clip which has movement. Actually I'll just show you before I apply it. You see particularly at the beginning we've got some kids running backwards and forwards from the sea. Okay, so this has got movement and echo really needs movement to work properly. So with the clip selected I'm just going to double click echo to apply it and you'll see that echo has come up into my effects controls. And when I hit the spacebar to play it instantly goes over bright and doesn't really show me an awful lot that I feel I can use. But don't give up on it. I'm just going to turn the audio off so we don't have to listen to that. What we need to do is play with these effects and get the idea of what's going on. So I'm just going to actually open and untwirl each of these different bits and pieces. And we've got the ability to go forward and backwards in time. So if I have got a negative number here, then my echoes are going to be after the event. So if this boy is running this way, his echoes will be behind him. However, if I want to create a sort of a more science fiction effect and I have a positive number here, then the echoes will be in advance of the runner. Okay, so echoes, negative, go behind the runner, positive will go in front of the runner or in front of the event that is taking place. This particular figure for echo is very, very small, so you're not really going to see it very clearly. And also, we've only got one echo, so why don't we take echoes up to seven? So we've got a reasonable amount of echoes, and let's take this to minus, say, 0.2. So I'm just going to highlight that in point 2. And then we can see the sort of thing that we have. You'll also see straight away that it's going to be far too bright. But let's deal with that in a minute. So if I hit the space bar to play, instantly it gets far too bright. Can't cope with that. Right, so what's going on here? Well, the echoes are, look at the operand down here, adding to each other. So as each echo arrives, point 0.2 of a second after the first one, it adds to the previous one. So what we need to look at is the starting intensity. At the moment the starting intensity is at sort of like 100% or, or full, it's going to add to it. But if we take the starting intensity right down, so something like 20, 30, that sort of area, yes it's going to start very dark and there's not a lot you can do about that, but as it starts to add the echoes together it shouldn't blow out in quite the same way. So let's just hit the space bar to get a feel for what that's doing. And even so, at 20%, it's still too much. So let's take it down from 27 to, say, let's try 10%. Okay, we'll try 10% and see how we get on at 10%. So hit the space bar to play, and they start building up, and we haven't gone over the top. And as he goes through in time, he's going to start running in a moment. You start to see the echoes behind him. Now, all of those echoes are the same intensity. I'm just going to pull that back so we can see them. All of these echoes are exactly the same intensity as the child. Okay, so because they're the same intensity, it doesn't give a very realistic effect. However, it does make it a lot more ethereal, if that's what you're looking for. So what we need to go to is look at the decay, which is actually a ratio. So if I take this to 0.5, for instance, I'm saying that the echo, the second echo, must be half the intensity of the first echo, and the third echo must be half the intensity of the echo before, but of course now that our starting intensity is so low it goes very dark. So I'm going to take this to 0.75, so the second echo is three quarters of the strength of the first echo, and then the third echo is three quarters of the strength of the second echo, etc. I'm actually going to turn the starting intensity up a bit until we can get a feel that it's just about the right area. There we go. Something like that. That's about right. We've actually got all seven echoes coming through, so I'm playing with the start intens intensity just to the point whereby it's not going to be blown out. If I go much further, it can blow out, but it's just there at about the right place. And you can see that all of these echoes are getting less and less and less as time goes by because of the decay ratio that we have. So I'll just play that through. So it's going to start off dark. As I say, there's not a lot you can do about that. It starts to add them at the ratio that we have here and then he's going to run forward in time and his echoes are going to follow him and they're going to decay to a lower figure and get that sort of echo effect. Okay, This is quite small movement but when they're still notice they seem to be a single item. It's only when they move that we actually get the effect but when they actually stand still 
they all become one solid item. You can see it with this man in the background. Every now and then he's standing still, and every now and then he's moving. It kind of disappears and reappears, which can be a very powerful effect. Now, if we take this minus 0.2 to just 0.2, 0 0.2, so it's positive, we go back to the beginning, we can just see the way the effects will work. So it's going to go forward in a minute, and the echo is going to start or lead the actual boy running. So the echo is to go first, the boy follows. And again, that can give an anticipatory feel for how things are going. Now do bear in mind with all these things that they are animatable. So you can animate echoes, you can animate time, you can animate how these things work. If you want to turn it off, but you still want the echo effect to be applied, just animate time. Turn time down to zero. So that the effect is still there, you've still got all the different approaches that you've got, but you're just animating when the echoes actually happen to get that sort of ethereal or that surprised or unsure or uncomfortable feeling. It's almost ghostly. Okay, now you do have also these operators down here, which are kind of like blend modes, is how one blends with the other. Minimum is going to look for the minimum opacity of the echoes to blend together. So let's go to a place where there's lots of movement taking place, about here. So that's looking for the minimum value, the next one's looking for the maximum value. The maximum value will be harsher, particularly when they actually arrive. And again, you're going to have to play with your starting intensity just to sort of get the overall feeling of, of the right brightness for the shot as you play with the different ones and then you've got screen which is like a less harsh version of add and then if your echoes have got an alpha channel around them then you can play with compositing them behind or in front and blend is kind of an averaging out it's going to average out how all the echoes work together and again we can see that that's going to give us a starting intensity which is just a little bit too high so just turn that down a little bit there okay so that's the echo effect it works really, really well if you have somebody who is not moving in the middle of a scene. So, for example, if you are sitting on a chair in the middle of a moving market, a crowded market, and you don't move, and everybody else around you who's moving has got the echo of some sort applied, then it makes you look as if you're the only solid item and everything else is a dream. And you must have seen that in various adverts at different times. So have a play with the echo effect, but when you're actually getting involved in your production, Think about using the echo effect as you film. So what doesn't move becomes very solid. Okay, so it's very solid, it's not moved. But as soon as it moves, it becomes extremely ethereal and transitory and ghost-like. So if you can film something that isn't moving, while everything else around is, then you'll create some really powerful effects.